Welcome to For the Health of It, Because You Can, where host Susan Robinson dives into the eight categories of wellness with experts from various fields. We offer tips and information to help you thrive in all areas of individual wellness. Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's podcast. My guest today is Lori Walls who is with Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services for the state. She's the manager of the state's Employee Assistance Program. Lori has been a licensed counselor since 2018. She graduated from Oklahoma Baptist University, where she received a bachelor's degree in psychology with a minor in family and community services. She also attended Southern Nazarene University, where she received her Master of Science in Counseling Psychology And also added to her education, she attended University of Oklahoma, where she completed master level courses in human resource management. So Lori's passion is providing mental health awareness and educational opportunities for employees within the workplace setting. Her goal is to ensure employees of the Department of Mental Health to have access to adequate mental health resources and opportunities that will promote greater psychological health and personal well-being of our state employees. So Lori, you have quite an extensive background. So tell us how you went through your journey to get to where you're our manager of our state employee assistance program. Yeah, so Um, I started out just doing counseling in outpatient setting, inpatient setting. I did some family um, counseling, individual, um, just trying to get my foot in the door with all different types of experience to kind of see what was my niche. Um, I really enjoyed inpatient setting and then was um, further promoted into a director position there and decided that I really enjoyed it and so decided to go back to school to get some more management, human resource experience that would help me within that organizational setting. Um, And what I found is a lot of my employees and coworkers um, were dealing with mental health issues themselves and how to handle that in the workplace. Um, I didn't have a lot of experience with it. Um, I mean, I did in the counseling setting, but not necessarily in an organizational setting. And so for me, it kind of became a passion. Um, And from there on, it kind of led me in that direction for my career. All right. That's an interesting journey, and it just makes total sense that you're now in a workplace setting. So that just totally prepared you for that. Um, All right. So um, tell us exactly what is the purpose of having an EAP program? Yeah. So really, I think it's a place for um, employees to receive support um, to help them, one, to be able to do better in the workplace, be more successful, um, be more efficient um, when you're supported, not only organizationally, but as well as your mental health in the workplace. I think that people... um, you know, perform better, but also they're able to address those things that are really struggling with family issues at home, um, mental health issues, um, job issues or stress related things within the workplace. Um, It's kind of a place and outlet for them to go to get that help and support that they might need that um, maybe they're not getting in um, their homes or um, within the workplace setting. It's kind of a safe place that's private, confidential for them to feel heard and um, supported in those uh, mental health issues. Good. Yeah. Um, so what I wonder, if somebody is new mm-hmm. to the state, and which we were having, you know, a lot of new employees come on board, and they don't know what this is about. So can you explain kind of what kind of services are available through EAP? Yeah. So really, we are kind of a um, more like a triage kind of department. They'll call us and we talk to them about options that we have, kind of try to figure out where they're at in their lives and what would be the best resources that could be helpful for them, whether that's case management um, or Um, Our employee assistance program offers all state employees uh, five free counseling sessions um, or if they're wanting, you know, a counselor or psychiatrist or other resources through their insurance, we can help them find someone that's in network and is currently taking clients on so that they can get into services a lot quicker. And that's even across the state, right? All over the state? 
Yes, all over the state. Um, I know we have a lot of rural agencies, um, state agencies and departments. Um, any state employee um, has access to those services. Good, good. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I know whenever I was health coaching, I received calls uh, from people that really needed services that were in rural areas. And I was kind of mm -hmm. lost, so I just actually sent them to the the mental health um, yeah. website, and so that was the only thing I knew to do, but, you know, that was sure. before I knew about the EAP program. Um, all right, so um, let's talk about postvention. Mm -hmm. I actually read that on your website. I know that you and I have traveled to different agencies, uh, so you do go outside of the office, mm -hmm. and I know I've traveled with you. Can you explain what postvention is about? Yeah, so this is if um, there was some sort of trauma, traumatic event or some sort of crisis situation where they felt their employees needed greater support than what they could offer. So we can kind of come in, do a debriefing, talk with them, provide some stress management, um, some deep breathing, uh, meditation, just taking time to spend with the employees, talk with them, uh, make sure that they have the resources that they need um, and that they feel supported as they're going through something that may have been a, a terrible experience for them on the job. Good. So um, agencies can know or employees can know that, that you will go travel to an agency if needed. Then. Yes, we definitely can do that. Yeah. And um, we are able, you know, if we don't have a training or we don't have a postvention related to a topic or something, um, you know, we have the resources to be able to develop that and, and make it fit for the situation, circumstances, and department or agency that's dealing with some sort of crisis or traumatic situation. Good, good. That's a great thing for, for people to know. And I can tell you the agencies that we travel to very much appreciated what we did. So, yeah. um, all right, well, let's talk about your website. Um, yeah. Like what kind of training do you have? What can people expect on mm -hmm. your website? So on our website, we do have um, all of our EAP staff on there. We currently have eight employee assistance program contract counselors. It has their bio information. So if you're cur curious about the um, counselors that we have on staff, if they would be a good fit for you. Um, you can check out their information on our website. Um, we also have information about the services that we offer, who's eligible, um, what that overall process looks like if you were to reach out to employee services. Um, and then we also have some training, just some stress management on there on our website um, that you guys can access. If you're in a bind and you're, you need something to de-stress with, there are great resources on our, on our website that you can access. So let me ask you this. Um, is the, the services offered only to employees, or mm -hmm. does this include family members? So all of our um, employee assistance program, we are available to all state employees, their immediate family members, um, and we do offer services to individuals that are also retired from the state. Um, if, you know, someone is a widow of a state employee, um, and then also if for some reason you're laid off or some reason like that, we do offer services up to six months of the um, leave from that. That is awesome. Yeah. Um, so talk about Wind Down Wednesday. This yeah. was something, when did you start Wind Down Wednesday and what, it, what is it about? Yeah, so we started it back in um, January of 2021 and we um, coming out of COVID, um, a lot of people working from home, and so we decided we needed a place where we could better support mental health in a group setting. Um, state employees come together on Wednesdays at noon, and we do different mental health topics, wellness, stress management, um, different type of mental health diagnoses, um, substance abuse issues, um, all sorts of different types of um, topics, but it's a great place for employees to come together to support each other, process emotions and thoughts that they're going through, a place to feel heard, um, but also just to be able to kind of have that support system in, in their mental health journey. I know your recent one, you actually had a representative from a credit union talk about yeah. financial well-being. So, because I know financial well-being um, mm -hmm. or stresses in financial 
part of our lives can be very, very stressful. So um, mm-hmm. those were actually really, I attend, by the way, <laughs> I attend these and uh, there's some great things. You learn a, a lot of things that are really good and yeah. a lot of support there from employees that just support each other. Mm-hmm. And um, it's it's a really good thing. So we'll let you know what um, how to access that at the end. And so, um, all right, now I'm going to get pretty serious here. So um, can you tell us a little bit about why you think there's a misconception about what mental health is? Yeah, I think our society in general um, doesn't do a great job of talking about mental health. Um, It's kind of this taboo topic that we don't discuss um, with our kids in school. We don't provide them training Um, in colleges. We don't really talk about mental health. And so we have adults out there that are emotionally regulated and don't know how to process their thoughts and feelings. And that can be a scary thing to be left alone with. And so um, not knowing who to turn to, what that might look like if they were to ask for support can be very overwhelming. And so I think um, just mental health in general, I think it's gotten better. We're talking about it more openly, um, providing more services, but it's still kind of a um, area that people are afraid to touch sometimes, I think, or maybe they're not familiar with it or educated about it and they don't really know how to help or what to say. Um, and I do hope that that will get better. Um, but ultimately, I think we, we need to treat our mental health um, just like it's our physical health and, and talk about it Absolutely. And, and reach out for services and support one another. So that kind of leads me into the next thing. Um, it, I think it's because there's been a stigma behind what is mental health and so um i know that that's a huge goal um is to Mm -hmm. reduce that stigma behind that because that is what has kept people from actually seeking services just like you said so Mm -hmm. all right something new started um and i'm not sure how long ago but can you explain about 988 Yeah, so this is a fantastic resource. We're so excited for the state of Oklahoma. Um, It is a wonderful resource. If you have a friend, loved one, coworker who is in a crisis situation, um, you don't know who to call. You don't know, you know, how to handle the situation. These are trained mental health providers that are deal with crisis day in and day out. They're able to talk with your loved one, friend, coworker, be able to kind of understand what's going on in the situation, um, kind of triage them to see where they're at and if they need, um, whether it's inpatient services, outpatient services, if they just need to be connected to a support group, something like that. But they're able to kind of get in there, make an assessment of the situation and help them get the help that they need um, so that, you know, you don't feel alone supporting coworkers, loved ones when you don't really know maybe what to do or where to send them. That's what they're they're there to do. Um, And then if they do, you know, suspect that it is a crisis situation, they do have um, crisis mobile assessors that go out into the community and they're able to, you transport them to the correct facilities that they may need to go to for further treatment, whether it's in an inpatient setting, an ER setting for further assessment, Um, but they're able to keep people safe in those crisis situations when maybe we don't know how to handle it ourselves. So definitely a great resource to have if you don't know how to handle it, just need support with somebody, um, you can always reach out to them. Um, They're 24-7. And I believe that they are rolling out um, a text option as well in July. So, yeah. That's nice. Um, Another resource that I know will be coming out um, is the WISA app. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah. So WISA is um, pretty cool. It's a... um, an app on your phone. And so what we're hoping to be able to utilize with it with EAP services is for those clients that come to see us in between sessions, it is a great tool to utilize if you're home alone at night and you're feeling stressed out or overwhelmed. Um, It is an IA kind of robot where it talks to you, it helps you process. 
it has some great things on there, meditation, stress management tools, um, but it is a great resource to utilize between counseling or other type of services um, that can be really helpful when maybe you don't know where to start. Um, it can be a great option um, just to reach out and kind of get some information on um, tips and tools that could be helpful for you in your situation. That's going to be so cool. Yeah. AI. <laughs> All right. Uh, last question is about um, mental health first aid. I know that um, a few years back, I went actually through that training. It was a two-day training, and I know it's changed and evolved. Um, but tell us a little bit more about what the mental health first aid and who this is available to. We're actually going to try mm -hmm. to get it offered through our statewide learning services program. So um, talk to us about what, what that is for. Yeah, so this is a great resource. Um, I think every state employee should take it just because I think it gives us some tips and tools on how to respond to individuals that are dealing with mental health issues, whether it's relationship issues or they have a diagnosis of mental health. Sometimes we just don't know how to respond in the workplace. And thankfully, there are individuals that are trained up, HR, mental health providers around us. But when we're in that moment and we don't know how to respond or what to say, um, this training can really help us with that, help us to know how to kind of talk to someone and get them to the support or services that they might need. Um, I think it is an awesome tool for supervisors um, that they should be required to take it. Um, just a really great applicable training on how to deal with mental health in the workplace, how to deal with individuals that are struggling with mental health to support them and, and make sure that they're getting supported at work. Right. And it helps mm -hmm. them to recognize, I think, when somebody might be struggling and afraid to say something. And yeah. um, mm -hmm. so this will be very helpful for that. Well, Lori, I appreciate you coming by and visiting with uh, the employees and the listeners. And, and uh, we hope to get your information up on so people can, uh, you know, go to your website, reach out to you and if they have more questions. So uh, again, thank you for coming today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And anybody have questions about EAP, we'd love to talk to them and um, help them and support them as best as we can. Great. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Remember, for more information on the EAP program, visit their website at eap.ok.gov. Thank you for listening to For the Health of It. For more wellness tips, information, and videos, visit the Thrive webpage. For questions, contact us at thrive at omes.ok.gov. Okay